Agincourt Church of God, 95 Nugget Avenue, Scarborough, Ontario, with host pastors Andre and Claudine Blake, presents The Outpour, Believing for Greater, from September 18th at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. nightly from the 18th to the 21st. Special guest speakers include Bishop Robert Francis. I'm going to exhibit a spirit of honor because a spirit of honor always precedes divine elevation. Bishop Vanya Grant. Praise and worship creates an atmosphere that invites God's presence and power. Bishop Errol Stewart. Paul lived in that place where every preacher, I believe, ought to live, where we are saying to God, God have mercy upon me that after I have preached and after I have taught that there's a purity, there's a, there's a, a holding on the inside that keeps me so that I don't become disqualified. And Reverend Camille McKenzie. Wait on the, on the Lord. Walk in the Spirit. Go after the things that are of God. Even if it takes time, wait on it. For the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Heartfelt worship by Nadia Good and Chardon Myers. For more info, call us at 416-321-3127. We look forward to you joining us at 95 Nugget Avenue, Scarborough, Ontario, and on our YouTube at Agincourt Church of God as we receive the outpour. Guess what? I believe that there's a blessing in store for you today. Amen? Are you excited about what God is about to do in the house today? Are you excited? Glory to God. I, 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 I sense that excitement and anticipation already. Glory be to God. Today we have one of our own precious man of God who will be sharing the word with us today. Come on, put your hands together. You'll hear a little bit more about him later on but let me take the time out to greet you in the name of jesus we want to thank you for joining us as we give honor and praise to the heavenly father for another opportunity to gather for worship i take this moment very seriously and i want to take this opportunity to declare today our outpour convention open come on somebody I believe that God is getting ready to give us an outpour. And throughout these four nights that are ahead, we are expecting a special outpour from God that will launch us into a deeper relationship with Him and an encounter from the Holy Spirit that will transform our lives forever. Are you, ex are you excited about that? I don't know about you, but I believe miracles are going to happen this week. I believe testimonies upon testimonies will be 
develop and will be realized and experienced this week. We have been looking forward to this day for, com for the commencement of the Outpour Convention. And we want to thank God that it is finally here. Come on, it is finally here. And as we start the new church here, we believe that God, God is ready to give us a fresh anointing. Come on, and that anointing that will enable us to chart the way forward in victory. Amen? So I believe that you can't miss the nights that are coming ahead. We have some great speakers lined up. And this morning, we're starting off with one of God's best. Amen? Praise God. Come on, put your hands together. He is my brother and my friend and our colleague in ministry, Bishop uh, Francis, Robert Francis. He's here with his men's director, Brother Ra Robert Richards, Richard, Brother Richard. And we're glad to have him. Put your hands together for him. Let me just quickly welcome with us some visiting friends that are here with us. Uh, I believe I see Sister Sonia's, um, somebody with Sister Sonia. I don't want to make any mistake and cause any problem. So I want to thank you for coming, sir. Good, or son. I kind of suspect, but I didn't want to get in trouble like I always do. So good to have Sister Sonia's son. Put your hands together for him. Glory be to God. I also have a, a lovely um, couple on uh, my left-hand side to the back there. I met them, but again, I won't even attempt to try to say their name. But I'm so glad to have you again with us. Put your hands together for, for that beautiful couple. And it's good to see again Bradley's aunt. I haven't seen her for a while. I reached out to her, and she's here with us again. Right over in the corner there. Put your hands together for her. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. I want you to stand together with me because we're getting ready for the worship team to lead us into worship. And I just want to pray for those who have just joined us online. So let us just reach out in prayer for them. Father, we thank you for those who have joined us online. God, I pray that today their hearts will be richly blessed by your Holy Spirit. And God, as we fellowship together, even though it's virtual that they are connected, Lord, the Holy Spirit will minister to them just like they're here with us. And they will miss nothing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bless our musician, bless our worship team, and bless us together as we give honor and praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please make welcome our worship team. Good morning, precious saints. Good morning. This morning, I will be doing the scripture reading. Uh, I invite you to listen whilst I read, please. I'll be reading from Haggai chapter 2, verse 4 through to verse 9. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. But be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josephah, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land declares the Lord, and work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. 
In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present day will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. This concludes the reading of the word. Together we say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise I'm excited to be in the presence of the Lord, and I'm excited to be in the presence of the Lord with the children of God. We are all children of God, just saved by his grace. Praise the Lord. I'm going to invite you to worship with us. Amen. Amen. Come all you weary. Come all you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water. Come and thirst no more. I want to invite you this morning that whatever weight you might be carrying, whatever is on your mind, that you are able, even for the next few minutes, to leave it at the altar. Amen? Amen. To come and drink and thirst no more because he is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord this morning? Is it me alone that loves the Lord in the house? If you love him, give him a wave offering and tell him that you love him. We worship him to show our adoration this morning. So come and worship with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come all you weary. Come all you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water. Come and thirst no more. Come, all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world, for God so loved the world that he gave us. His one and only son to save us, who one more time as we worship him this morning. Come all you weary, come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to table he will satisfy taste of his goodness find what you're looking for for God so loved the world oh for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live Whoever 
the greatest scripture verse. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. And we have the victory this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. We can live without fear. We can live without depression. We can live in the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And what a blessing that is. Hallelujah. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. So we can overcome. Amen. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved because Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Can you declare that this morning in worship with us as we call on the name of Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. We do worship you this morning, oh God. Be in our midst. Hallelujah. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome, yes. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here, yeah. Oh, carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Sing, I will live. Oh, I will live. I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ. Alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. Carrying our burdens. Yes, he is. Oh, carrying our shame, he has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Sing, I will live. Oh, I will live. I will not die. The resurrection power is alive in us this morning. song right from the top as we declare the goodness of the Lord this morning. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Oh, carrying our burdens.
words. Ah, those are big promises we have from our Heavenly Father this morning. He's fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom. That cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Enemies are defeated. And my God, the least we can do is shout it out. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to give you another opportunity to shout as we sing this song of worship to him this morning. Graves into gardens. We serve a God that is able to do all things. And he can turn your darkest situation into something that can flower into a garden. Amen? We need to know the God that we serve and believe in the power of his goodness this morning. There's absolutely nothing better than him. And as we sing this song together, enjoy a moment of worship where you can just love on him and tell him how much you love him and just be at peace with God this morning. For he is awesome, he is worthy, and he is wonderful. Lord, we worship you. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence in this house. We thank you that we can approach your throne, oh God. We thank you, Father Lord, God, that the veil has been torn, that we may boldly worship before you, Lord Jesus, that we can approach you directly to tell you how much we love you. And we do love on you this morning, Heavenly Father. Be in our midst, oh God. Be in our midst, Lord Jesus. Be in this house, Heavenly Father. Help us to worship you in a way that you alone are to be worshipped this morning, oh God. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your endless love and your grace, oh God. We just worship you this morning, Lord. Father, how we love you, how we love you, how we love you, Lord. We honor you this morning, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. You came along, put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing. You 
turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. Sing it with me. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the Yes, for there's nothing better than you, Lord, nothing better than you, there is nothing, nothing is better than you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is nothing better than him this morning. There is nothing better than the God that we serve. There is no reason to do anything beyond praise him in our situation, praise him in our circumstance, because he is able this morning. Amen? Do you believe you serve a God that is able? Are you believers that you serve a God that is able? I believe that I serve a God who is able. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we do worship you this morning, oh God. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, oh Father. Yes, you turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn Turn your bones into ashes and seize into highways. You're the only one. Oh, you're the only one. You're the only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him his praise offering this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We serve a God that is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord is blessed by our praise and blessed by our worship this morning. Be blessed in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let, let's continue in this attitude of worship and praise. I want to say thank you once again for everyone who has joined us online and everyone who is in the house with us today. A special thank you to all our visitors, uh, both online and in the house. Uh, as we prepare right now to worship the Lord in giving, I I encourage you to, 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 to be mindful of how significant it is that we, we not only praise the Lord with words, but we praise him with our actions, with our deeds, with our resources. I encourage you today, as we embark on our four-day convention, that you will give a special contribution for this purpose. I want to invite you right now to repeat with me the blessing declaration. Today, as I bring my tithe and offering, I do so with thanksgiving 
for the blessings of God in my life. As I give, I believe in the Lord for an increase of blessings, prosperity and favor over my family, my friends, my finances, and my future. Thank you, Lord, for your favor and for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for your blessings that renew every day. We thank you for waking us up in the morning, for giving us breath, for giving us life. We thank you for providing for us, both physically and financially and spiritually. Heavenly Father, as we bring our offering to you today, I pray that you will bless it and multiply it. And you will help us to put it towards the development of your kingdom and the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For those in-house... Uh, please follow the directions of the ushers. And for your convenience, we now have a new debit machine, if you choose to use so. The, uh, the uh, ushers will have it at the back for you to use. And I'll invite the praise team leader back to do a song for us. love to praise in giving. Amen. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise I love 
praise God. Could we continue to worship the Lord? Somebody praise the Lord. If you love to praise him, could you worship the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. God is a good God this morning and we give him praise. So I wasn't talking about me. I was talking about God. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 There is no one better than him this morning. The song says he turned graves into gardens. He turned bones into armies. He's the only one. Seas into highways. Oh, hallelujah. 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 When I think about that, those words of that song, the song that comes to my heart is God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you, because he's able. Yes. Yes, he is. This morning we have with us a very special friend very special brother who will be coming to share the word of God. But before I tell you who he is, a little about him, I also want to welcome Brother Richard, the men's director of the New Beginnings Community Church right there in Curtis. Could you put your hands together for him one more time? So good to have you, Brother Richard, with us this morning. Good to have Brother Kelly and Natasha, who is streaming with us this morning as well. And all you wonderful people. This theme for convention, as we believe God, it says, believe then for greater things. And I don't know what you're believing God for today. But I believe in God for some new things in my life. Because I want to see a new season. Whatever it is that you believe in God for, he's able to do just that. Bishop Robert A. Francis is the gifted, anointed, and dynamic pastor of the New Beginnings Community Church in Curtis, Ontario. A courageous, exciting, and visionary leader, Bishop Francis is a highly regarded and respected preacher, teacher, and speaker. A trained chemist by profession, Bishop Francis walked away from his previous vocation to answer the call of God for his life. He has broken the mold and is a first-generation preacher. Bishop Francis was just recently appointed to serve as the Regional Men's Discipleship Director for Eastern Canada and has also served as District Overseer of the Durham District of Churches. A lifelong learner, Bishop Francis is presently a student at Lee University and Seminary, pursuing a doctoral degree in theology and church leadership. Bishop Francis is an avid soccer player who also enjoys movies, reading, and traveling. Bishop Francis is married to his wife, First Lady Reverend Marie Francis, and they are proud parents of one and only son, Aaron Alexander. Brothers and sisters, 
Would you be so kind to stand with me and make welcome to this podium this morning, Bishop Robert Francis. Could you give him a good hand, please, and make him welcome. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That was for me, but why don't you put your hands together for the Lord this morning. He is deserving of worship. He is deserving of praise. You can do much better than that. This is Agent Court, Church of God, and I know how you guys get down up here. Put your hands together for the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and our God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I'm truly humbled and honored to be here again at the illustrious Aging Court Church of God, where, praise God, where I've been afforded this great privilege and opportunity to share the word of God with the people of God on this morning. Permit me, aging court, to observe proper protocol by honoring the shepherds of this great house, your pastors and my friends, Bishop Andre and our classy elect lady, Claudine Blake. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I also want to acknowledge the presence of Pastor Sam, who is our elder statesman in the house, my God, and all the other ministers, ministry leaders, and those of you who serve with the Blakes. I want to thank God for each and every one of you this morning. I bring greeting from the First Lady, my First Lady, my only lady, Reverend Marie Francis. She sends her love to this wonderful congregation. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. But church, I'm here on assignment this morning. I'm here basically to lay the groundwork for what I believe God is getting ready to do in this season here at Aging Court Church of God. And so for the time that is ours this morning, I would like to direct your attention to a passage of scripture taken from Paul's epistle to the Ephesian church. It is found in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. When you have found it, can we all say amen? Here's what it says. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit. Let me say that one more time. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Will you bow your heads with me as we go to God one more time in prayer? Eternal Father and our God, we humbly come before you on this morning in the name of your son, Jesus. We pause, Lord God, in this preaching moment to give you honor, to give you glory, and to give you praise. Because, Lord God, if it were not for you, then, Lord God, we would not be here on this day. Father God, we have lifted, worshipped you with the lifting of our hands. We have worshipped you with the fruit of our lips. We have ministered to you again, Lord God, with our substance. But now, Lord God, our ears are inclined to hear a word from you. And so, God, as I stand behind this sacred desk, I ask that one more time, O oh God, you will breathe upon me. And that you will give me the unction and the anointing, O oh God to do what you have called me to do. 
Our prayer this morning, Lord God, is simple. Speak, Lord, for we, your children, are listening. Bless your word now, Lord God, unto our hearts, and glorify thy name. These mercies we ask in no other name but the name of your son, Jesus. And may all God's people agree with me by saying, Amen and Amen. For the time that is ours this morning, I want to tag this message that God has given me to give to you, to deliver to you, and it is in the form of a question. And so why don't you look to your neighbor on your left-hand side and say, neighbor, come on, do it with me. Neighbor, oh neighbor, I've just got to ask you, are you drunk? That's the wrong neighbor. Why don't you turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I just need to ask you one question. Are you drunk? Now put your hands together for the Lord. Are you drunk? And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. These words that we have just read in our text this morning were penned by none other than the Apostle Paul. And I do believe that I can state without fear of contradiction that the writer of this letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, is among and if not the brightest of all those who would put pen to parchment in an effort to bring clarity and revelation as to who Jesus really is. From the moment of his life-altering experience on the Damascus Road, where he was going to apprehend those who dared to identify with the one who is called the Christ, and in turn got apprehended by Christ, this Paul church had an unquenchable zeal and inextinguishable desire to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the then known world. You see, my brothers and sisters, Paul had this unique quality that seems to have been lost, Pastor Sam, in the modern day church. Paul, friends, have what we call passion. And because Paul had this obsession to share this gospel message to the entire world, he, as the scriptures informs us, sets out to do exactly that. For in three missionary journeys, Paul, the Bible lets us know, literally circled all of Asia Minor to share this message of the gospel that literally changed his life. He shared a message of a risen savior who was alive and well and available to whomsoever would receive him. Why? Because, friends, Paul had passion. Paul was so passionate about his newfound assignment that he would go over land and sea just to tell one convert about the goodness and the love and the mercy of God. Paul, my brothers and sisters, had passion, and this passion, church, gave him the capacity to press and push past all the challenges and perplexities that plagued him in his pursuit of carrying out the purposes and the will of God. Uh, permit me to inform you, church, that passion gives you the capacity to take a licking and keep on ticking. That when you're passionate about what God has called you to do, 
You don't let a pandemic stop you. When you're passionate about the things of God, you don't let people's criticism and doubts keep you from trusting God. When you have passion, you don't wave the white flag of surrender at the first sign of challenges and tests. Passion, church, is the fuel that drives you to do what God has called you to do. And this man, who is the subject of our discourse this morning, this man named Paul, hear me now, undoubtedly had passion that helped him push past challenges he had to face in pursuit of God's purpose. And if anybody had problems, if anybody had issues, if anybody had challenges, if anybody had tests, it was this apostle Paul. As a matter of fact, Paul, by his own admission, informs us that he was beaten several times almost to the point of death. He reminds us that he was shipwrecked and spent a whole day and night treading water while out at sea. He was stoned at Berea and left for dead. He was abandoned by so-called friends, stabbed in the back by people he trusted, and had his apostolic leadership called into question. Paul had challenges. The things he taught were twisted and manipulated by his enemies. He even went on to say that he had a thorn in his flesh and prayed to God three times and God did not release him but simply reminded him that his grace was sufficient to keep him. What am I saying, Chirp? If anybody had a reason to throw in the towel, it was the Apostle Paul. At almost every twist and turn in his newfound life and ministry, Paul had a problem or some problematic people that he had to deal with. But because Paul had passion in the face of problems, listen to what Paul says. Paul says, listen, I've learned in whatsoever state I am. I've learned to be content. I know how to be full and I know how to be empty. I know how to have and I know how to do without. I know how to have good friends and I know how to stay faithful when everybody ups and leaves me. And after all that, Paul concludes by saying, listen, I can do all things, Jesus, anything and everything through Christ who strengthens me. What am I saying, my brothers and sisters? What am I trying to tell you this morning? All I'm trying to tell you is that this man named Paul had passion. Hang with me, I'm taking you somewhere, I'm taking you somewhere. Permit me to inform you also that Paul was not only a man of passion, hear me now, but Paul was also a man of fierce intellect. Paul, we are told, had a grade A education comparable to a doctoral designation in our day. He was a student of the famed philosopher Gamaliel. He was versed in Hebrew studies, but he was also educated in Greek culture. And because of this reality, watch this, Paul had the privilege of viewing the world and relating to the world from dual perspectives. Watch this. And because Paul had both passion and intellect, it made him, church, efficient and proficient in being an ambassador for Christ while sharing the message of the gospel. And church, it is because of his keen intellect and passion that we will soon discover that this Paul wound up writing most of the New Testament and this letter to the Ephesians that we are looking at this morning is just one of the works of his theological genius. Hang with me, I'm getting there. Let me take my time and ease into the text. When the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, 
He wrote to church from the vantage point, watch this now, of a prison cell. One of the things that I like about Paul and that I do hope in turn you will come to appreciate is that Paul had the capacity to see the bright side in every situation. Paul, even though locked up in jail, did not sit in jail throwing himself a pity party while feeling sorry for himself. No, church, Paul understood, watch this now, that it is absolutely possible to bloom where you are planted. Paul believed that God can give you a message in spite of your mess. And that with every test, bears the possibility of a testimony. And so I believe Paul may have resolved in his mind that I don't like where I am. But instead of me serving time, watch this, I'm going to let time serve me. And so Paul, instead of being preoccupied with his own situation and dilemma, decided to put pen to parchment and write a letter to encourage other folks like you and I who are going through. Can I pull over just for a minute, just church, just to remind someone that may be going through right now, is that one of the ways you can get over your own issues, one of the ways that you can get over your own struggles, one of the ways that you can get over your own challenges uh, is when you quit uh, being so preoccupied with you uh, and your stuff uh, and try to help somebody else uh, who is going through uh, and church that is exactly what Paul did can I go deeper now church this letter to the Ephesian church at the hand of Paul watch this is one that teaches not only in its substance, hear me now, but also rev in its structure. Because a careful study of this letter reveals that this letter, watch this now, is divided into two sections. Can I take my time and teach this morning? The first half of the letter deals with doctrine and the second half deals with practice. Watch this. The first half deals with what we call in theology orthodoxy and the second half deals with what we call orthoproxy. Paul tells us we are to believe in the first half and then he informs us how we ought to behave in light of what we believe in the second half. Can I go deeper with this thing? Watch this. In chapter 1, Paul teaches us that we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. In chapter 2, he teaches that we have been resurrected, that those of us who name the name of Christ have been raised from the dead to a new life. In chapter 2, he also teaches that we have been reconciled, that at one time we were without God and Christ with no hope and no way back to God, but God in his infinite love and mercy brought us back into relationship and fellowship uh, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and church, I don't know about you, uh, but my soul gets happy just thinking about all that God has done for me. Uh, but then the Bible says, uh, he jumps over into chapter 4, uh, the second part of this letter, and he says, watch this, uh, that now that we have been redeemed, uh, now that we have been resurrected, uh, now that we have been reconciled, by God, watch this, we ought to now walk worthy of the vocation in which we are called. Let me push it further, church. In the same chapter, he tells us to take off the old man and his ways and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. In chapter 5, he begins to tell us that we are to be imitators of God, walking in love as Christ has loved us. And by the time we get to verse 6, he informs us that we ought to walk as children of light. Then around verse 15, he warns us that since we have 
been redeemed, since we have been resurrected, and since we have been reconciled by God, we must then walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise men. Watch this. And so Paul's letter to the Ephesian church, watch this, is doctrinal and instructive at the same time. And friends, this is what I love about God. He always tells us what we are to believe, and then he calls us to a way we ought to behave. But here is our problem, Pastor Sam. Here is our dilemma. Watch this now. You and I cannot do God's will without God's help. Can I say that one more time? This is a situation that we are dealing with right now. You and I cannot do God's will, Jesus, without God's help. You and I cannot live out a godly life here in the earth without help from heaven. And God is such a good God that he never calls us to a new way of life without giving us what we need. And the key to living out what we know in light of the scriptures is found right here in our text in chapter 5 and verse 18. When Paul in his dissertation says to the Ephesian church and is saying to aging court church of God on this morning, he says, God, Guys, be not drunk with wine where in is excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Hear me, church. This verse serves as the key to living out what Paul had already instructed us in chapters 1 through 3. It is the key to having what you need to live the life God has called you to live. It is the master key that unlocks God's desire for you and I to do and experience the greater. He says, listen, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit of God. Watch this. Now, if you take the time and study the writings of the Apostle Paul, you will discover that Paul had a unique and ingenious way of being able to look at a negative circumstance or negative circumstances and pull out a positive perspective. And so when Paul's letter to the church was read at Ephesus, this is what the congregants heard. They heard, be not drunk with wine. And when they heard, be not drunk with wine, hear me, I believe that some of the congregants, much like you, may have had some flashbacks. Because some of you sitting under the sound of my voice, you know what it means and feels like to be drunk. You know what it's like to have a little wine or a little whiskey. <laughs> a little whiskey or a little cognac or some other spirit. And some of us in the body of Christ, Pastor Sam, we justify it by saying, well, the Bible says you need to take a little wine that's a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible ever said that. Paul said it to Timothy. But there are those of us sitting here this morning who knows exactly what Paul was talking about. Because there was a time and there was a season in your life where you used to get a little rum and Red Bull. Don't, don't shake your head, don't say amen, just wink, just wink, just wink. Watch this. And so the Apostle Paul had this propensity to look at something negative and pull out of it something positive. 
And so in our text this morning, Paul is saying to the church at Ephesus and to you and me here at Aging Court, watch this, that the key to your victorious living, watch this now, is found in your past experiences. I'm going to go deeper this time. He says, watch this, you used to get drunk with wine in your past. But the key to your living now as you navigate your way in your new life in Christ is not to get drunk with wine, Jesus. But you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. He says, watch this, now that you have been redeemed, now that you have been resurrected, and now that you have been reconciled by God, don't be drunk with spirits, but be drunk with the Holy Spirit. Listen, he says, if you and I are to live out the plans and the purposes of God, if we are to do the greater works Jesus told us we will be able to do in this season. We need to live inebriated and intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. We need to live under the influence of the Holy Spirit. We need to learn as a church and as Christians to live drunk. Jesus have mercy. I know, I know, I know. I know there are some of you here saying, my God in heaven, what is Pastor Francis really saying to us this morning? Are you really telling me as a Christian that I need to live drunk? And I came by to tell you, my brothers and sisters, yes, sir, you and I ought to live drunk. And the drunker, the better. All right, all right. You don't get it, so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me bring it up to your front door. Just in case somehow you do not understand where I'm heading, permit me to explain myself so that you get the revelation. Watch this now. If you recall people of God in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, we are told that before Jesus had ascended to heaven, he commanded his disciples to go to an upper room and stay there for what? The promise of the Holy Ghost. And as they were praying and tarrying, the Bible says the Holy Ghost fell on them like cloven tongues of fire and they began to speak in other tongues. People from the four corners of the earth heard these men and women filled with the Holy Ghost speaking their native language even though they were Galileans. Some were confused at the sight and some said, watch this, these disciples must be drunk. Watch this. And Peter, in the midst of all that was happening, got up and addressed the spectators and says, gentlemen, these people are not as drunk as you think they are. Peter says, listen, I'm not saying they're not drunk. They're not drunk with the thing you think they're drunk with. Why? Because it's too early in the morning. Watch this. This is Peter talking. But just in case you're wondering, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days it shall be, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And even on my men servants and handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy watch this so Paul like Peter is saying to you and me this morning watch this that if you and I are to live out the plans and the purposes of God, if we are to experience the greater, if we are to do the greater works Jesus expects us to do in the 
this season, listen, uh, you and I, church, uh, need to live inebriated uh, and we need to be intoxicated uh, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we need, church, uh, to live uh, under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we need, church, to learn to live drunk. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Let me get practical this morning. God is saying that in order for you to experience greater, in order for you to experience the outpour, in order for you to do the greater works, Jesus have mercy. He says you need to live drunk. You need to be drunk in his spirit. Jesus have mercy. Now watch this, watch this, watch this church. I got to get practical. You and I can tell when someone is drunk. You and I can tell church when someone is under the influence. Watch this. Because when you are drunk, when you're under the influence, the first thing you notice is that the speaking is a bit different. You could speak normally, but once you're under it, you know, your speech gets slurred. <laughs> you don't speak the same. As a matter of fact, when you're drunk, watch this, you will say some things you would never say if you are even sober. Can I go deeper? When you are drunk, or when someone's in drunk, when someone is drunk, you can tell they are drunk not only by how they speak, watch this now, but by how they walk. Jesus. Because when you're inebriated and when you're intoxicated and when you're under the influence, it changes how you walk. You don't walk like you used to walk. When you're drunk, it affects how you treat your family. It affects how you treat your friends. It affects how you treat the people around you. And Paul in this verse is saying to the Ephesian congregation and to aging court church of God this morning, that church, I want you to remember how you were when you were drunk with spirits, as in alcoholic spirits. But now that you're a part of God's kingdom, he wants you to get drunk in the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, God wants you to be so under the influence of the Holy Spirit that you walk differently, you talk differently, you treat people differently. Things you used to do, you do them no more. Instead of cursing out folk, you start speaking blessing over folk. Places you used to go, you don't go there anymore. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are made new. Uh, Paul says, church, uh, when you are drunk uh, with the Holy Spirit, uh, when you are filled uh, with the Holy Spirit, uh, when you're under the influence uh, of the Holy Spirit, uh, when you're intoxicated uh, by the Holy Spirit, uh, everything in your life changes. Hear me, hear me. It is the influence of the Holy Spirit that swings wide the door of possibilities. That you and I can believe and do the greater works God expects of his church and live a life that is in line with the doctrines and the purposes of God. What am I trying to tell this church? You will never experience greater unless you're willing to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit, church, 
that makes the difference. It is the Holy Spirit that makes preaching passionate. It is the Holy Spirit that brings conviction. It is the Holy Spirit that brings revival. You will never experience greater without the Holy Spirit. I looked at your theme and your theme says we're believing God for greater. But God sent me to aging core church of God to with one message. And the message is simply this. You will never experience greater until you are willing to become intoxicated by my spirit and by my presence. God is looking for a people who are willing to come under the influence of his spirit. Here's the problem that we have in modern day Christianity. Pastor Sam, we have become so educated and sophisticated. And we follow the latest fads and the latest trends and think that that is what's going to grow the church. Can I tell you? No! What makes the church the church is the influence of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, all you got is a social gathering. Without the Holy Spirit, church, you might as well take the cross off the steeple and just call this a gathering, a get together. What makes the church the church is the Holy Spirit. God says, God says, you want greater? You want to see me move? You want to see me break barriers? You want to see me do amazing things? Here is what I needed to tell my people. Tell them to get under my influence. It was the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God that makes the church the church. Do you know what makes us so different from every other, uh, dare I say, faith, not just Jesus Christ, but you and I have access to the Holy Spirit. That's what makes us different. That is the thing that empowers us, Bishop Blake, to do greater. And to go into the deep things of God. Okay, I'm about to close. But permit me to make my last point and get out of the way. Watch this now. Let me do a bit of teaching because you all heard that I'm going to Lee University now. So I got to show you that I'm studying. Because everybody coming with doctorate and... Okay. I'll leave that there. Watch this. When you look at this particular verse, Pastor Sam, in its original language, look at it with me, church. It reads differently from how we see it in our English language. Watch this now. In the original Greek that this text was written, it reads this way. Here's how it's written in the original. Watch this. And you... Come on, Sister Coffee. And you, Jesus, do not be drunk with wine, which is lechery or luxury, but you must con continually be filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? Watch this. Jesus. What is interesting about that noun, all the teachers, please Roxy, hello Roxy. What is interesting about that noun, you, in the original Greek, is that the you used in the original Greek manuscript, watch this, is not singular. It's a plural noun. 
And I believe what Paul was trying to emphasize is that this call to living drunk or living under the influence of the Holy Spirit is not an experience reserved only for a certain set of Christians. It's not only reserved for Bishop Francis and Bishop Samuels and Bishop Blink and Reverend so-and-so and Dr. so-and-so. No church, my brothers and sisters, living drunk and under the influence of the Holy Spirit should be a part of the everyday lifestyle of every believer. All of us here. Here's the mistake we make. Jesus have mercy. Thank you, Spirit of God. Here's the mistake that we make. And what we have done, we have done an injustice to the men and the women of God. We feel that they are the only ones who need to come under the influence of the Spirit of God. We feel they are the only ones who are obligated. But Paul is saying, no, 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 no. If greater is to come, if you are to experience and do the greater work, it's not just Bishop Blake and Lady Blake. But all of us here must come under the influence, Kurabaseta, of the Holy Spirit. And when we all come under the influence and we start walking together and working together in unity, that's when greater comes. Jesus, Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. But while I was preparing myself this morning, God woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And he says, being filled with the Holy Spirit is a huge issue. But here is the proposal that God gave me at 5 o'clock in the morning. Pastor Sam, check this out. Here's what God said to me. The issue is not, Robert, whether you have more of the Holy Spirit. You got it. It's not about having more of the Holy Spirit. But does the Holy Spirit have all of us? Because some of us in the body of Christ only allow God and his spirit to influence some areas of our lives while not giving God access to all of us. And the only way you will be able to experience and do the greater is if God gets all. All of you. I came back to tell somebody who showed up to church this morning. And I came to remind somebody who is watching us online. Listen. That God does not want just part of you. He wants all of you. He wants your heart. He wants your mind. He wants your soul. He wants your, your, your body. He wants your good. He wants your bad. He wants your doubts. He wants your fears. He wants your dreams. He wants your disappointments. And he can only do that when you're willing to be drunk and come under the influence of his Holy Spirit. I'm closing now, but... I challenge you, hear me, Agent Court, that if you want to experience the greater, if you want to experience the outpour, you must be willing to live drunk. If the church is to effectively do the greater works Jesus told us about, he needs all of you and he demands your whole life. And so to every one of you listening or who will eventually listen to this word, I challenge you in this moment to surrender every part of you and every area of your life 
and put it under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because when you start living drunk, when you start operating under the influence of the Holy Spirit, God says everything changes. You'll start to love your enemies. You'll bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. When you start living drunk, uh, whatsoever things are true, uh, whatsoever things are honest, uh, whatsoever things are just, uh, whatsoever things are pure, uh, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, you are going to find yourself thinking on these things. When you start living drunk, you're going to experience an outpour of God's power, presence, and provision. So that the works that Jesus did, you will do also. But beyond that, Jesus says, you will do even greater. So the question that God sent me to Agent Court to ask is this. Are you drunk? Are you under the influence of my Holy Spirit? Because in order to see the greater and accomplish the greater, God sent me to tell you, you need to be drunk. You need to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You can't just wish for greater. You need to position yourselves for greater. And the position that every believer and every church that desires to do the greater works in this season that Jesus told us was possible is to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Listen, I don't know about you. But what God desires for your life and mine, for what God desires to see in the earth, hear me, Agent Court Church of God, and those of you watching us online, hear me. You need to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so as you come to this house this morning, I want to let you know, church, that you are in the right place and at the right time. Because you are not here by accident. You have been called here by God to do great work for God. But God says in order for you to do this great work, I was paying attention to the passage of scripture that was read this morning about how God is going to be rebuilding his house. But can I tell you, friends, that the only way God can rebuild his house and rebuild lives and rebuild his people is when we make a conscious decision to come under the influence of of the Holy Spirit. Education alone will not do this thing. Skill and ingenuity alone will not do this thing. The difference maker for the child of God and for the body of Christ is the Holy Spirit. And so God sent me to tell you, Agent Court, you want to experience an outpour? You want to see greater in your midst? Then come under the influence of my spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. May you receive it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Could you just point your hands toward the man of God and say, Lord, bless him.
Come on, help me, church. Point your hands towards him and say, Lord, bless him. Oh, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the servant of God. We thank you for the word that you have delivered through him today, reminding us that we need your Holy Spirit if we're going to do greater. In the name of Jesus, Father, bless him from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. And God, we pray that you will cause your Holy Spirit to do greater works even in his heart, in his life, and in his ministry. We thank you for him and his family and his church in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can the church say amen? Stand with me, everybody. Holy Spirit, reign now. Reign now. Oh, comforter and friends. Hallelujah. Lord, we need your touch. Again, come on, somebody say, Holy Spirit, rain now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Rain. Mm. Oh, let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your words holy spirit come on worship team help me sing it one more time say holy spirit say holy spirit rain Comforter, oh, comforter, and friends, yes, Lord. Oh, we need your spirit, we need your touch again, Lord. Holy Spirit, rain. Oh, come on, personally say, rain. Oh Lord, let your let your voice let your voice come and change my heart, change my heart as I stand as I stand on Your words, Holy Spirit. Come on, church, don't stop. Rain. I'm I'm gonna open this altar for somebody today. Oh, Holy Spirit, rain, rain, oh, sing it, rain, God, Lord, let your, let your voice, let your voice, somebody, God has spoken to you today through this word. God is speaking to you right now. Hallelujah. Don't let this moment slip by without inviting Him, inviting Him into your heart. So I want to give somebody the opportunity. Oh, say, Holy Spirit. If you are here today, glory to God. You believe that God has great things in store for you. You know that God has spoken great things over you. But there is seemingly something that is stopping you, blocking you, that is hindering you. Oh God, I, I believe it's a moment for release right now. So I want to invite you to move out of your seat and join me at the altar. If you are here today, and you believe that God has great things for you. God has promised something special to you. But every turn you turn, it seems like something is hindering you. The Holy Spirit is here right now. He is here. Move from where you are and join me at this altar right now. Oh, 
Come on, sing it like you really believe it. Rain. This is your prayer. This is your desire. Come on, somebody help me say one more time. Holy Spirit, rain down. Come on, say rain down. Rain. I feel the anointing. The Holy Spirit is ready to help somebody break through to what God has in store for you. Oh Lord, let, I need your touch, God. Come on, somebody, this is your prayer. This is your cry. Again. Come on, help me, help me. Holy Spirit, rain. Oh God, oh God. Rain down, Lord Jesus. Rain down, God. Come on. We need some strong men to just come and help. Oh! Oh, and your voice. Oh, come and change our hearts as we stand on. Come on, somebody just touch this lady over here. There's a lady over here that needs somebody to just pray for her. Come on, I need a believer. Just come and touch her. Hallelujah. Oh, sing it one more time. Say, Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit is ready to, to touch somebody's heart. The Holy Spirit is ready to pour out on somebody this moment. But church, I don't want you to spectate. I want you to either pray, I want you to worship, or I want you to sing. But God is in this house to deliver. He's here to break through. He's here to release somebody today. Oh! Holy Spirit! Oh, hallelujah! 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 Rain. Let your Let your voice Oh, come and change Change my heart Lord, as I stand on your words Holy Spirit, rain. Come on, God is God is moving. God is moving upon His people. Oh, somebody pray for a young person. Pray for her. Oh, somebody don't realize that the Holy Spirit is in the house right now and He's moving in a special way. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, yes, God. How oh, we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Oh, Lord. Rain down. Rain down. God is doing a change work right at the altar right now. God is doing a change work right at this altar in the name of Jesus. Oh! Come on church, lift up your hands, your right hands and point it towards the altar right now. I believe God is doing a work of deliverance. I believe God is doing a work of manifestation of purpose. I believe that God is Pouring out his anointing upon somebody's heart tonight, today, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will touch her and minister and bring breakthrough what the enemy meant for evil lord do it for their good what the enemy meant for destruction we reverse it in the name of jesus oh hallelujah you're not here by accident this moment it's not by chance you're in this house today i believe the holy spirit want to change your heart Come and change your heart we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, Spirit, reign now. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on church, just give God praise. Lift up the hands. Lift up both hands and say, Lord, we surrender today. We submit to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to be saturated in your presence. Oh, somebody need to know if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost while he was on earth. We cannot do without him. We cannot live without him. Hallelujah. The power we walk in each day when we go into our workplace. The power we walk in each day we go back to school. The power we walk in each day when we have a challenge before us. It's proportionate to the time we spent in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Can I get the church to just lift your hands like a policeman and stick you up or, a, or some bad man or whatever and say, Lord, I surrender. Come on, church. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I surrender to the Holy Ghost. The preacher said it. It's not how much Holy Ghost you have because you can't have more than what God has given you. Is one Holy Ghost. But it's how much of you that the Holy Ghost has. Today I want every single soul in this house to raise your hand and say, Holy Ghost, take a hold of me completely. Hallelujah. I surrender all. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Lord, I surrender all to you. Withholding nothing. Oh, God Almighty, I want those that are at the altar just to take this moment. And I want you to surrender your heart. If you're not a believer, today is the moment. Today is the time. If you're here and you're not saved, don't let this moment slip away. Jesus loves you and he, he not only wants to give his Holy Ghost to those who are saved already. He wants those who are not saved to come to him so that he can pour out his Holy Spirit upon you. So if you are here today, you're not a believer and you're saying, I want to experience the Holy Ghost. I want you to come to the altar because we're going to pray a final portion of prayer. And I wouldn't want to leave this place today without praying over you if you're not a believer. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you today for those who have come to the altar. Lord, we ask for forgiveness of sin. We ask, Lord God Almighty, for transformation in the inward parts. Lord, we do not know what is happening in each person's life right now. But God, your Holy Spirit has searched them. And you have tried them. And you have seen their heart, God. And I pray today, Father, that they will surrender all. And see the work that you will do in their lives. I pray for those that have been receiving, those that have received a special call upon their lives. A call to go to a higher level in God. A call to not just be intellectual or to get the world knowledge, but to also be filled with the knowledge of God's will upon their lives so that God can use them to bring uh, many to salvation and deliverance to the broken and set a liberty them that are held captive. God, I pray for those today as well. That they will receive a boast of courage, a boost of confidence. And boldness to speak, thus said God. Lord, I thank you for the young people that have come to the altar today. And have surrendered and, have, and are saying, God, I want more of you. I want more of you. I felt the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to encourage them, God, to continue to seek after the baptism. So that, God, you can use them. Hallelujah for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Today I want you to leave the altar believing if you have not yet given your life to the Lord and you have given your heart to the Lord, speak to Sister Coffee. If you are asking for a special prayer that you want us to pray throughout this week for you, talk to Sister Reverend Miss Minister Coffee, And she will get your number, get your information and pray over you. Because we believe that this season is the season 
of outpour and the season that God is going to do greater things. Are you with me, church? And I want you to believe it. Leave this altar today as a victor. Leave this altar today stronger. Leave this altar today. Say, Lord, I am surrendering all to you. Come here, Brother Chester. I want to pray for you. And oh, you've been dealing with a few situations of health concern, but we're believing God for your healing. Father, we put our hands upon your son right now. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray, God, that you will give him total healing, God, in the name of Jesus. We have no doubt, God, that Chester's life is in your hands. And God, that you wish above all that he prosper and be in good health, even as his soul prosper. And so we pray that he will be healed because your word said, by your stripes, we are healed. And so I declare healing from the crown of his head to the very soul, the bottom of his feet, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And I pray for breakthrough, God, in his life. God, I declare that you will bring to him a partner that will love him and bless him. And God, be a strength in his life. In Jesus' name I pray. Oh, somebody give God glory. Give God glory, somebody. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Kiana, continue to open your heart to the will of the Holy Spirit. And he's going to fill you up. And he's going to use you for his glory. Hallelujah. We, we believe that God's going to do miracle. And we believe that we're going to see it in our lifetime. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you so much, Bishop Francis. You may be seated just for a moment. Let me see if I can get you out of this place so you can come back tonight for another segment and another moment of the stirring of the Holy Spirit. Come on, lift your hands and say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, come on. Somebody say, fall on me a fresh Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Why is it that God asks us to come to him every day? Because God wants to fill us anew every day with fresh anointing. Amen? Praise God. I want to just take this opportunity to just welcome so many of you that are here today. I see a beautiful lady with Sister Erica. Um, I am so glad to have you. I don't know if I have you. Are you Gloria by chance? What is your name? Oh, Merlin. Okay, so I didn't get that one. But good to have you today. Could you put your hands together for Merlin? Mar, Marlene, okay, Marlene, so good to have you, and I think we have Myrtle Payne as well with us, is she there, praise God from good, good Barbados, this is a Barbados church it seems, the, Bar the, the, the Bayesians seem to be taking over this church, but we don't mind, we don't mind at all, glory to God. We also want to welcome Gloria. Gloria is out the back there. Put your hands together for Gloria. So good to have you today in worship. And the couple I spoke about earlier, they are friends of Sister Janelle at the back there. Um, one of the young ladies here that's doing great work. And we received her some times ago. And she said she's going to go get her friend and bring them here. So... You know, keep your fingers crossed. Be nice to them, please. Treat them very well because we don't want them to leave. Amen? Praise be to God. But thank you so much. God is doing a great work in Aging Court Church. Amen? Praise God. And Brother Richard, we thank you for coming along with Pastor and just blessing us with your presence. We, I sense God has a special work for you as well. And I'm just going to pray that God continue to use you. Amen? Please remember we start at 7 tonight. In fact, we start at 6.30 at, for prayer. And we have Bishop Vania Grant, who is today installed as the new, the executive pastor for the life, sorry, the New Life Covenant Center. That is the church that Bishop Kanyu Blake, my uncle, pastors, pastor. So we, and they're coming as well. We have a guest praise and worship leader in the person of Sister Nadia Good. And it's going to be good. Amen? It's going to be good. So you can't miss it tonight. 
Um, I think we have a few announcements. We're going to have them just to play those, and then I'll pronounce a benediction and let us go. What is this? <laughs> Welcome to ACOG. Here are your announcements for Sunday, September 18th, 2022. Make sure to join our Word and Prayer Bible Study each one today at 7.30, which is now offered in person. Make sure to join our Life Impact Sessions each Sunday from 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. Do you know how you can give? If you'd like to give in person, you can give via the two front baskets at the front of the auditorium. If you'd like to give via e-transfer, please e-transfer finance at agentcourtcog.org. If you'd like to give online, you can give at www.agentcourtcog.org. And finally, if you'd like to mail a check directly to the church, you can give at 95 Nugget Avenue, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 3B1. On September 24th, the Seniors Ministry will be having a Cognitive Impairment, Alzheimer's Disease and Dementia presentation by guest speaker Judith Barnaby, Professor of Nursing. On Friday, November 18th, the ACOG Dove Ministry will be having the vision set. In coming weeks, more information will be made available. On Sunday, October 9th, we'll be having our Thanksgiving celebration service starting at 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Remember Zoom Prayer is on Sundays from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The Outpour Believing for Greater Convention continues tonight at 7 p.m. to Wednesday the 21st. To keep up to date with all ACOG news, please download the ACOG CareSpot app, which can be found on the App Store or Google Play. For assistance, please see one of the tech team members. For weekly Sunday morning services and Wednesday evening Word and Prayer Bible studies, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also make sure to follow our Instagram page at Agent Court COG and on Facebook at Agent Court Church of God. That concludes this week's announcements. Thanks for joining us. Whether online or in person, you being here means so much. If you're a visitor, we'd love to connect with you, so fill out a connection card that can be found on the ACOG Church Track app. ACOG is a Christ-centered church that cares about people, and everyone is welcome. So on behalf of everyone here at ACOG, I'd like to personally wish you a very blessed rest of your night and a safe rest of your week. And I'm sure you'd like to have some Aaron and her holding up his hand. Right, Brother Blake? So please come and join him this evening as he lead us out. I'm going to say to my sister there, that lady you're sitting beside is a good lady to sit beside. She will help you to grow in the Lord, I'm telling you. And she has a special anointing that if she pass it on to you, you're going to be a champion in the faith. Amen? Come on, put your hands together for her. Praise be to God. Could you stand with me? It is such a joy. There's such a sweet spirit in this place. And I know it is the presence of God. Thank you so much again, Bishop. We cannot thank you enough for coming and leaving your church. I know how difficult that is to leave your, your flock on a Sunday morning. But you decide that you're going to be with us in Aging Court Church. It means that you um, had a good time at Aging Court Church. So you love to come back here. Amen. I'm sure they love to see you all the time, but it is truly an honor to have you with us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Grant you his peace, both now and forever. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Good to see you, Brother Rumbolt. And I say, Brother Rumbolt, I'm glad to see you because I'm going to see you on the men's choir some of